Serious, graveyard shift workers of Reddit, what is the weirdest or creepiest thing you experienced while on the job? Worked at a bulk item store overnight. In the cafe. I was prepping food for an early morning pickup. And went to my car on my lunch break. Walked out to find a gaze of raccoons surrounding my car completely. I shined my phone light at them in hopes they would disperse. But all eyes went on me immediately. And then started after me as I was fumbling to hold on to the sandwich I had just made. I pounded on the entrance door. The door monitor had walked away to get a soda. And her inevitable waddle back over would have taken too long. I sacrificed my sandwich that night for my freedom. I am a nurse in a nursing home and I was working 10 p 6 and this one particularly feisty old lady would always tell me that she hated me and was going to haunt me. Well for an entire week after she died her call light kept going off when the room was unoccupied. Freaked me the fck out. It had never done it before and had no signs of being tampered with. I work at Subway. The guy who does graveyard shift 10pm to 4. 30am was sick no one else could fill in. So I had to work 12pm for. 30am so a very long shift. At around 2. 30am a construction worker comes in with his friend orders a sub completely normal. He finished his sub and leaves with his friend. 20 minutes later he comes back with what I assume was cocaine he starts snorting it on the table then sits there staring into space. I'm watching him on the camera as he was a big guy and I didn't want to confront him. I go back to cleaning 5 minutes later I hear loud noises I look at the camera and he's kicking the bin around like a football. I go to the counter and politely ask him to stop he gets up and leaves. 10 minutes before I'm about to close he comes in and falls asleep at a table. I shake him to wake him up but he's either too stone tired not listening so I tell him I have to close the shop and he walks out without saying a word. Two days later he comes in again and I made his sub he never once apologized for doing drugs and kicking the bin in the store. I worked nights in a care home for the elderly patients with dementia etc. Found quite a few dead bodies. First one was on my fourth ever shift working there. Second ever shift actually working the floor after training. And I had to help wash and dress the body. I was 18. There were many more people who died whilst I worked as a carer. There is really no preparing you for that. Graveyard at the gas station Sunday Thursday night. Typical drunks. Vacationers fueling up. Morning zombies for their coffers. I think the creepiest was when a guy started to hit on me and ask for my number. He would not take no for an answer and always was there when I came in for my shift. Mind you I am a woman alone. I was not allowed to have anything to defend myself. Because it was against company policy. Though I had easy access to phone the police. Well this one particular night he wanted to touch me. I wasn't standing it. My throat started getting hot and before I was about the verbally assault this creep. A regular walked in the door with her hand on the gun. She is my hero and a security forces who stops by to grab lollipops before heading to the field. He left hurriedly and I have never seen him since. I worked in a supermarket in Newcastle, Australia. It was about 2am one night and the store was surprisingly busy. That meant that we were understaffed on the registers and people were getting shitty, and with good reason. And then it happened, a very, very large Ananda man, probably Samoan Tongan, began ranting and raving and then picked up a toddler, 3 or 4 years old, I suppose, by the ankle and started swinging it around as a weapon. This CNT has actually picked up a small child by the leg and attempted to assault his wife with the child. All hell broke loose and two big cunts who were in line took him down. With some difficulty. The whole thing lasted about 1. 5 minutes. I'm reasonably sure I'll never see anything like that. Ever again. I worked the graveyard at a gas station in Vermont. There were like 7 other gas stations on the same street. One night I'm doing my regular stuff. And at that little 3am dead period my boss came rushing through the door asking if everything was okay and if I was hurt. After establishing that nothing unusual had happened. She pointed across the street to one of the other gas stations. The window was busted out. Turns out all 7 of the other gas stations, which closed for the night, had been broken into and robbed. 
I never paid much attention to the outside. And I took my smoke breaks out back. So I guess between the two things I just missed it. I imagine they skipped my store because they didn't want to be seen. Which is kind of funny. Considering they were caught by at least 100 separate security cameras at all the other places. Still. Gave me a good fright. Not weird or creepy like a lot of the stories I've read but I had a guy this past summer come in to buy meth supplies. Now. I'm not sure if the things he had were really for drugs. Since I've only seen Breaking Bad. But he came down the aisle I was working in with a cart overflowing with bottles of chemicals and various glass and plastic apparatuses. It was the dozen bulk packages of cough syrup that made me think drugs. But he comes down my aisle and starts shoveling boxes of cornstarch onto the top of his already full cart. It was at this point that he noticed me watching him and asked me. Is it cornstarch that does that weird volcano thing? Dot. I told him it was baking soda and he just stands there looking between his cart and me a few times before asking me. You know don't you? Double quote. I shrugged and he just walked to the end of the aisle left the cart there and I never saw him again. Hope I'm not late to the party but last fall on my third shift of the week I came to work with the cold. I work in a group home and the area where it is located is by land surrounded by mobile homes. Anyways my boss told me there wasn't anything to do at night, I usually clean the facility. Bathrooms. Do inventory. ETC. So after I did my food inventory. I sat down on the couch about to do my studying of philosophy. The chimney is right in front of me with the door shut. 15 minutes into my studies the chimney door just opened and shut really fast. I looked outside to see the trees to see if there was wind passing and nothing. I stood up and shut the doors and went back to the couch to read again. 40 minutes later I got up to use the bathroom and went back on my book. Once I sat down I saw a transparent little girl on her knees in what looked like she was praying. She had one of thighs John Bennett dress like in the 30s era with no hat. I just stared. Not blinking. Frozen stiff at that little girl just praying. She got up and walked to the front door of the facility and poof gone. Still gives me the jeebies and I don't get scared easy. This was kind on and off the job. I was seeing a client. Who had serious sexual misconduct issues. He was a convicted rapist and a pedo. I'd been treating him for a few months. And had happened to have seen him outside of work. First time, when I was on a date. It was a bit weird seeing him there. Strip club. It was my date's idea. Given his history. Anyway. We are in session following this, 3 days later, and he brings up he went on a date. On the same day as me. And went to the same 3 venues I went to. Roughly at the same time. I never felt so creeped out about what me and my partner, at the time, had chosen to do. I used to work an emergency line for pet sitters in an emergency, 24 hours a day. 365 a year. Comma one day in early December. I am sitting at my cubicle staring into the abyss of a blank screen with things I am supposed to be doing on it. At about 3 a.m. Over the bored chatter of the few office mates I had I heard gunshots ring out. And they were close. This is in the downtown part of the city. Both myself and my co-worker immediately knew something was up. Cause we both knew it was gunfire. He's ex-military and I am. Unlucky. Comma soon after cops swarmed the area. At least 20 marked units are searching the area. The next morning the news is saying an art teacher and youth advocate was killed one block away from where our office was. Every time I am patrolling around town and ride past when he was killed I think about that night. TL. DR. We listened to a man die for no reason. Postmates was late. I work overnights at a hotel. One hotel I used to work at was a few hundred years old. In a very small town. It was usually pretty quiet. Would occasionally feel like I was being watched from outside the big windows in the lobby. No one was ever there. Also. The register in hotel restaurant would occasionally beep or click for no reason in the middle of the night and make me jump about a foot. Current hotel I work in, college town, has a lot of drunks and homeless people in and out of the lobby all the time. Once went to the bathroom. Came back to the front desk. 
and found a man pushing an unconscious woman through the lobby on one of our luggage carts. Found a dead body, suicide, in a guest room. But it wasn't something I found so much as her family called and flat out told me she probably killed herself. And I needed to verify this before I called the cops. I do a couple night audit shifts a week at the hotel I work at. The only experience I've had so far that was creepy in any way was just the other day when this elder dude came in around 5am for directions. He talked about his business for a bit, which seemed a little pyramid scheme-esque. And then accidentally took my picture and put it on Facebook. I mean I'm a 22 year old guy so I'm not super concerned about this one picture. I'm just confused as to why he did that. This actually just happened this week. As a relevant side note. I also watched Stranger Things for the first time this week. I work in a Medicaid waiver home for people with disabilities. So the designated smoking area is actually a backyard. Which is no lighting unless it's a full moon. I went out to smoke. And was looking at something on my phone when I suddenly felt something large hit me in the legs. Like right below my butt. When I whirled around. I couldn't see anything. I don't know if there was a bird or rabbit or something else that whacked me. But I was too freaked out to look too hard. I ran back inside pretty quickly. On a more humorous note. I regularly get the shti scared out of me by one of the individuals. She doesn't always sleep through the night. And will come out to ask me for a glass of water. The thing is. She doesn't make a single sound. Despite being almost 6 foot and over 200 pounds. So I'll just be sitting there. Doing whatever I'm doing to stay awake. And I'll look up and have her practically looming over my head. I used to work night audit at a shitty motel outside of downtown area. It was cheap so we'd either get travelers on a budget or... Hookers. It was probably around 3am when I was working alone. Quiet night. Wasn't really expecting to see anyone come in. So I was kinda happy to see it was a regular. He was late 30s guy who you could tell had a drug problem. He'd stay at our hotel for a night or two every month. Judging by his crazy eyes. I'd assume meth. Anyway. He came in with some large black duffel bags and I start the check in process. But he grabs my hand to stop me. I look up to see those crazy meth head eyes. He says wait. If I pay you $300 will you promise to not tell people what you see here tonight? Dot. I didn't really know what to say. I mean. There's a bunch of cameras and I've never been asked that. I stutter out and now. He gives me too much money for the room. Tells me to keep the change. I give him the keys. He picks up his bags and walks out. Never came back. Waited all night at the desk to see if he'd be back. But for the next year that I worked there he never did. I wonder what or who were in those bags. Alright. This may not be the spookiest or the scariest. But it scared the living daylights out of me. So I might as well share it. So the place where I work at maintains and services water wells and septic tanks. At the time. I'd only been working about a month or two. So I was pretty green. Anyways. We were having a hell of a long day. And it was about close to midnight when we were on our last job. A chicken house in the middle of nowhere. We had only pulled roughly 15 joints of pipe. If any of you know what that means. Not even halfway through. It was hella dark. Our only lights the spotlight we had set up. No one was around. The birds were asleep. And it was the three of us. My boss, a real no nonsense veteran. Old fashioned. Agent Gibbs kind of guy. Another one of my co-workers who was about as imaginative as a brick. And me. The gopher. Anyways. We were pulling this pump in the middle of the night. Exhausted and dirty from the day when we hear the most blood curdling scream we have ever heard. Before the scream stopped echoing. The rest of the pipe, about 450 feet, started shaking. Banging up against the casing. Beating the hell out of the pump at the end. Now. Keep in mind. This stuff is heavy. A grown man standing on the surface couldn't shake it like this. Then it stopped. My boss looked at me. Pale as a sheep. And then said we might as well take a break. We haven't spoke about it since. Now I don't know what the hell we disturbed down that hole. 
But you can bet your biscuits that I'm not going to that site again. Worked for university security at a small school. One night around 2 or 3 am we get a call about somebody suspicious around one of the all girl dorms. I see this kind of overweight creepy looking 20 something guy slowly walking through the parking lots. Bending down picking something up. Reaching into the gutter sometimes pulling something out. Going in between cars through bushes. Etc. My partner and I approached him in our patrol car. Spotlighted him. And saw he had a big handful of tiny metal things. Asked him what he's got there. He showed us. It was all bobby pins. At least 100 or more bobby pins. He just told us in a monotone voice I keep finding these things everywhere. I don't know why. I think maybe they come from girls hair but I don't know why they keep dropping them. They're everywhere. He apparently very often would roam the campus picking up bobby pins. If that's how many he had in one night then I can't imagine how many he must have collected over time. We replied hum. Okay. Well. You just be careful and we took off. I finally have one for this. I work overnight security at a hotel. One night. I get a call to open the door for a guest who had locked herself out of her room. Pretty standard stuff. However. When I exited the elevator to the guest floors. I knew something was wrong. The most vile smell I've ever come in contact with was in the air. I walk towards the room I'm supposed to be opening. And a drunken naked woman is standing next to the biggest pile of shti I have ever seen. Apparently. She was so drunk. She thought the room door was the bathroom door. We don't even have a bathroom door. Since she had plans on shitting. She wasn't going to stop now that she was out in the hallway. She just plopped a squat right in the middle of the hall. Roving custodian maintenance worker for a school district. There is an older school whose main building is from around 1900 and always gives me the creeps when I work there. One night while doing the final door check of the H shaped building something weird happened. I had just gotten back to the center of the H where the exit and alarm panel were and turned off the last of the lights only to hear doors slam shut at both ends of the building. Never moved so fast in my life setting that alarm. I absolutely hate it when we get sent to that school and try and make it the first stop of the night if we do go there. So it's not pitch black. Worked as a psychiatric nurse in a near 200 year old hospital. Was in the office when I heard metal on metal banging down a very long corridor. I sat listening for about 20 seconds but my curiosity got the best of me. I got up and put my head round the door to see what it was. As soon as I did the banging stopped. I thought to myself how odd. I walked down the hall to investigate. As I neared a set of wide open double doors. I went to walk through the doors when suddenly the door nearest me swung and slammed right in my face with a loud bang. I stood still a moment then Ray opened the door and said not tonight Matherfica. I later mentioned it to the regular staff. They said that's the ghost. So there is that. I used to work at a university IT help desk as a student. The job was boring but my boss always allowed us to work on our assignments if it was quiet. That summer I worked a lot of closing shifts where we closed up at midnight then I would do a tour of the building to lock up all the computer labs. On one of these locking up trips I was in the bowls of the engineering building and I could hear some trumpet playing softly in the distance. I was alone and the building's lights were off. Except for the ones you can't turn off. There was definitely a creepy vibe to it. Anyways I eventually find the source of the sound it was this old prof practicing trumpet under an unlit stairwell at 1230 am. It was so bizarre. It was just me and him in the building. I guess the wife was pissed off at him that night or something haha. <laughs> Standing watch in the navy overnight. It's about 3 am at our hangar and there is only two of us in the building. The guy upstairs has to sit at a desk and answer the phone. So he is not allowed to move. He also has a bathroom not two feet from him. Myself was on the rover post and would walk the hangar. We had been on watch for going on 3 hours so we knew no one was in the building. After making a full round I was on the far end of the hangar when I stopped by the bathroom. Went inside and sat down on the seat and my heart almost stopped. The seat was warm. It was the middle of December in 20 degree weather. 
I used to work the night shift at a BPO. Our company just launched a new branch in the 32nd floor of a building that's still being built in some floors. I went outside the building for my 3am break because I was so sleepy and rode the elevator back to the floor 15 minutes later. I was the only one inside. I tapped the button for my floor and stared straight ahead. Still trying to keep awake. As the elevator moved up. When the doors opened. I was still a little out of it and I almost took a step forward. But I stopped myself in time when I realized what I was seeing. Or not seeing. For that matter. It was pitch black. And I was all alone. I checked the buttons. And the one for the 21st floor was lit up. I quickly pressed the close button. Scared that it might turn out like a horror movie and the elevator won't close. But it did. And I got to my floor safely. No one was there. And although I was sleepy. I know for a fact I never pressed that button. Still gives me shivers as I type this. I used to work a graveyard shift security on a small college campus. One night. I notice a van drive up at a weird time. Probably 2 in the morning. Three guys hop out wearing ski masks. I'm thinking. Holy shit. We're having a shooting. But before I had much time to react I notice they're sprinting right towards the flagpole in the middle of camps. They stand there for 45 seconds taking a group piss on the flagpole. Sprint back to the van, get away driver already had it in gear, and drive away quite fast. I work at a teen drug rehab center school and for our job once a night we have to check the perimeter of the building and make sure all the windows are closed and nothing's left outside. The building itself is mostly surrounded by fields and is located in a small town. It's about 3am and I was walking around. I heard children's laughter coming from the fields. Scared the crap out of me. I then had the horrible realization that I am a red adult and therefore have to tell any potential kids that they need to get the FCK off the property and go home. So I go up to the fields and yell hello. Fully expecting to be the first one killed. I saw some movement but no noise. After a couple of minutes I booked it back inside. It's not really a graveyard shift job. But I work on a yacht and when we go there the night we take turns on watch. It's a relatively big sailing yacht. One night. At the wheel on my own. Trying to keep awake. Looking up at the stars. I became aware of a green glow coming from sea around us. Faint at first. Then super bright. I knew almost straight away it was bioluminescence. It shines bright colors when you disturb the water. So all around the boat was this bright green glow. Then I shti myself. Right in front of me. I was looking off the starboard side. About 8 glowing green monsters jump out. It gets freaky out there alone guys. Your mind goes to dark places. I was frozen for a second. Longest second of my life. Until I realized they were dolphins. Swimming and jumping next to the yacht. When they would pop out. Their entire bodies were covered in the bioluminescence. It was terrifying at first. But amazingly beautiful once I realized what they were. My captain also told me a story of when he was in the middle of a massive electrical storm at sea. Lightning literally hitting the surrounding ocean and bouncing. He said that's when you just accept your fate and hope for the best. Many decades ago I was working at a security company's dispatch center in a large city. One night I got a phone call from a frantic woman screaming that her house was on fire. As I explained I wasn't the fire department, pre-911. So it was probably a similar number to mine. And trying to get her address so I could call them for her. She screamed again that now the curtains had caught fire and she hung up. I had no way of tracing her call or retrieving it in any way. There was a fire in the news about a woman with serious injuries with her house a total loss. And to this day I remember how helpless I felt. I worked at a dollar store out of the rural area of town, literally the only store within 10 miles. And only cows and a few houses around. I went to the back to put a cart full of cardboard by the dumpsters for pickup. And to take a smoke break. There's bright lights in the parking lot. But behind the store. They're blocked off. I kept hearing crunching footsteps in the field. But assumed they were cows. 
When I opened the door to go inside I heard a very quiet faraway voice ask. Where are you going? I thought it was my manager and brushed it off. But when I noticed she wasn't in the back room. Or by the back room door. I kinda became scared. I grew cold at the fact she was counting cash drawers in the office on the other side of the store. Where she was before I left. Now. I grew up in the same area on an old dairy farm. I know it sounds cliche but I did. And I had seen and heard things growing up. But no matter how many times it has happened to me. I still grow cold. Not my story but my mom's. When she was 19 she worked the graveyard shift at a 7-11 in a large city. One night before work started her manager warned her that the police had been by and said there had been reports of a flasher the night before. Cops hadn't caught the guy yet so just be cautious. No big deal. About 3 a.m. Mom was working at the counter and a guy came in wearing baggy sweetpants. He meandered about for a bit and brought a couple of cans of veggies up to the counter. Mom was ringing him up and putting his cans in a bag when all of a sudden he pulls his pants down and flops his DCK out on the counter as proud as could be. Mom freaked out and smacked his wee little pee pee with the weapon she happened to have in her hands. One of the can of veggies. Guy collapsed on the floor and mom called the cops and guy got arrested. Coffee shop. 4 AM. Some guy comes in and my co-worker is just staring at him weirdly as he walks up to me. He just comes to the counter and says someone lit the garbage can on fire out there and just leaves. Sure enough a few seconds later I see flames reaching out of the garbage can on the street outside our shop so I go fill a bucket and pull it out. After I put it out my co-worker said before the guy came in she watched him throwing lit matches into the garbage can but he walked inside before she could tell me and didn't say anything because she was weirded out. I was graveyard security at an office building. I had just finished patrolling the upper levels of the parking garage and made it to the ground level when I suddenly felt very cold. It was a relatively warm night and there was no breeze. But I didn't think much of it until I saw what appeared to be a shadowy figure across the way near the bike cage. I immediately ended my patrol and went inside the building called up my co-worker who provided security at the sister building across the street and we both reviewed the tape on CCTV. For the next 5 hours. We watched as a clear as day shadowy figure walked about 15 feet away from me. Paused briefly as I came into frame and noticed it. And then it simply walked away. No more patrols were conducted that night. I work on a college campus so nothing should surprise anyone. The worst stuff happens on Thursday nights since that is when a lot of the students drink and the last night of the semester school year is especially bad. Someone passed out drunk in an undergrad lounge which wasn't too surprising but finding him butt ass naked lost in the building at 4am was. The cleaning ladies, who don't speak English that well, cornered him and took pictures until the cops showed up. I'm on a graveyard shift right now. I'd say easily the creepiest part of my job is loading the wagons. It's a large factory built pretty much in the middle of nowhere which is surrounded by open fields and some woodland. The yard on which the wagons are located is fairly big. Big enough that the cameras can't cover all of it and there are many blind spots for me to be seized. Touched. Eaten. The options are endless in this six-fingered county I work in. Think deliverance with less banjos and more benefit cheats. Also coming from inside the factory where air protection is needed at all times due to high noise levels to a perfectly silent yard is always unsettling. Birds often aren't awake at that time so my work is accompanied by the sounds of gravel crunching under my forklift and my heart hammering inside my chest. Late to the party so this probably won't be seen but I was working at a hotel doing my 2 a m rounds and went to the back stairwell which is indoors and started going up it. Part way up was a huge chunk of long blonde hair but not messy at all like it had been ripped out. More like it was neatly cut and gently placed. Got to the top of the stairs and next to the door was a bloody handprint. Just past the door in the hallway was a bloody smear down the wall. Got the hell out of there and called my manager who lived on site and we went to check it out and the hair was gone and so was most of the blood. Talked to a couple of our guests who had stayed there for months for work and they hadn't heard anything. We never did find out what happened. My production lead was Catholic and gave some rosaries away to anyone that wanted them one day. 
We actually worked swing shift and got off work midnight to 4am depending on overtime availability. The plant was in a pretty rough part of Fresno. California. One of the guys who took a rosary was young and had just started working so hadn't saved up money for a car. He walked home every night a couple miles through that area. After swing shift most people have gone to bed and the streets are pretty empty. It was full. A little chilly and no moon. He was walking down a rundown block with a field along one side of the street and a couple rundown buildings on the other. A woman walked out from behind one of the buildings and straight up to him. She said. I'll trade you my ring for your rosary. He was wearing a sweatshirt with a jacket. The rosary was around his neck under the sweatshirt and not at all visible so he asked. How do you know I have a rosary? She didn't answer the question but said again. I'll trade you my ring for your rosary. At that point he brushed past her and walked away fast. When he stopped to look back and see where she was. She had disappeared. Okay. This isn't from a graveyard shift. But these comments aren't as creepy as I was hoping they'd be so I'll add mine. One time I was driving home from my ex's house at about 2 or 3 am which I did pretty often. And for which I took one of three paths back. This was in rural suburban Illinois on a really misty night. I was the only one on the road for the entire drive. And I was taking the path that I rarely took. When I rounded a corner of trees. I almost hit a sun marked semi truck which was just idling in the middle of the intersection. Blocking any way to cross the intersection. No one was in the driver's seat. I start slowly trying to go around it and saw a straight line of at least 30 completely identical and unmarked semi trucks. All on them with the engine running. And as I saw while driving past. All without a driver in them. Keeping in mind that this was just a normal. Three lane road that led to like the library. A few food places. And some houses. It was really eerie.